During my Spanish learning journey, there have been so many times where I have felt like a baby when I was having conversations with Spanish speakers. And little did I know that this was actually perfect for increasing my listening comprehension skills. I have a friend who was from Guatemala and we met almost two years ago now in the gym. Now he is a very special friend because he's actually one of the first native Spanish speakers that I was having conversations with in person and consistently. Through these conversations with my friend, I have learned a lot about how to actually increase my listening comprehension skills with Spanish. Because when we first met, I probably understood maybe 50% or 40% of what he was saying to me. And the funny thing about that is his accent is fairly neutral and he doesn't use that much slang. So for me, it was kind of difficult to figure out why I did not understand him that well. But one big thing that stuck out to me was that I lacked a lot of vocabulary. And I realized this after he was having so many different conversations with me about different topics that I was not accustomed to having conversations about at all. And some of these different topics were business, romantic relationships, poetry, religion, personal development, and then fitness and health and food. So for me, I definitely felt like a baby because I had to learn a lot of this vocabulary. But in this case, I actually was not learning a lot of vocabulary through reading a lot of flashcards and things like that or watching TV, but now I was learning directly from a Spanish speaker and by asking him a lot of questions like, ¿Cómo se escribe esta palabra? How do you write or how do you spell this word? Then I would also ask him a lot of questions about the definitions because he would say a lot of words that I was not aware of or I didn't have any knowledge of at all. So I'd have to ask him to break it down for me and he would always do this. So for me, it really felt like I was a baby, I was a toddler, just trying to figure out what he was saying, but then also the pronunciation of it as well. And one thing I realized that really helped for me was when he would say a word that I didn't understand, and then I would try to say it back. I'm like, oh, did you say like uh, refrigerador? And then he would actually help me pronounce that word correctly. Then he would explain what it meant. <laughs> so as we had more conversations over the next few months, I started to realize how important repetition is when it comes to increasing my listening comprehension skills. Because now after all those conversations that we were having about all these different topics, I started to understand him a lot easier because we kept talking about a lot of the similar topics. And that's when I really started to see the value in repetition, but also combined with patience. It's one thing if he's, uh, if he's repeating a word, let's say in the same week, but if he's saying the same word over and over again for four months or five months, then that word is definitely more solidified in my mind. I finally know how it's pronounced because I probably repeated it over and over again out loud. And then more than likely, he has explained the definition of this word over and over again over those months that we are having conversations. And I love these types of conversations so much because I definitely need the practice. And again, with repetition, for me, it's very difficult to remember the pronunciation or the definition of a word just after hearing it three or four times. Sometimes I may need 10 times. I may need to hear it 20 times for it to really solidify in my mind. Another thing that really helped me to understand more of what my Guatemalan friend was telling me was understanding the culture of Guatemala because there's a lot of words and phrases that they use there, right? That I was never exposed to because I never met anyone from Guatemala until I met him. So the more that he explained to me the, the culture from his country, I started to pick up on a lot of the vocabulary that he was using. And one of those words is guatemalteco or guatemalteca. Now this is another one of those inside jokes that me and my friend have because I have so many issues saying this word. I have no idea why, but it's always a funny joke because I always say something like Gu Guatemalecos or Gu Guatemala. That's exactly how it happens. <laughs> and he's just like, bro, it's Guatemalteco. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> then I repeat, say that over and over again. And then, yeah, you know the story. <laughs> a lot of repetition uh, trying to pronounce words correctly. 
So yeah, let me go back to uh, the culture aspect that has helped me so much to have not just knowing the definition of a word, but what is the actual history behind a particular word? Because that opened up my eyes even more so. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think I just said that incorrectly again. So looking online right now, it looks like you would say it as Guatemalteco, Guatemalteco. I would ask him how to spell it because I thought that it would actually help me understand him better because then I could spell it out in my head. I'm like, okay, Guat, okay, it's it's un hey, u a Guatemalteco. I would go through that process and I had no idea at this time that this was going to be incredibly useful because a lot of the words I was hearing, right, for basically at the beginning, the first time I ever hear a word that my friend was saying, it just sounded like mush. It just, you, it's, you know, incomprehensible. But then when I started to break down each letter, then it was very comprehensible. It was very simple because I know exactly how each of the letters sound in the Spanish alphabet. So I could just piece it together just by him spelling out uh, that particular word that I did not understand. Another thing that I noticed during the conversations that I was having with him is that my head would get extremely tight. I would get very tired and then my listening comprehension would actually lower because of this. And then after months and months of conversations, I realized that it is because I'm having very long conversations with him, number one. So I was having conversations with him for sometimes 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and even an hour sometimes. So I realized that was a big factor as well because I wasn't used to having conversations for so long in person. And that is very different from just sending voice recordings uh, through HelloTalk or texting a Spanish speaker. The I would say the experience you have when you are having a conversation with someone takes out more energy. So that's something that I didn't realize for many, many months. And then when I told him, he was like, really? And I'm like, yeah, especially because of the words that you're using. <laughs> because he would use a lot of complex words as well. So I would try to focus and try to understand every single word that he was saying to me. And I realized that, oh, that also has an effect on my listening comprehension skills as well, because it is the way that I'm listening to or what I am trying to listen to. What I mean by that is that listening comprehension is very complex. <laughs> so there are different ways that you can actually be listening to someone. For example, like I just said right there, that I was trying to focus on every single word that he was saying so I could somehow just try to memorize it right away. But then there was also times where I was focusing on the actual sentence structure. So I was almost like doing a little Spanish grammar study session because I was very unfamiliar with the grammar that he was using as well. The other way I would listen in this conversation was actually not stopping him. So not stopping him to ask him a question about uh, what is the definition of that word? How do you spell it? And things like that. But I would just have a conversation that was, you know, very normal and not doing any of that whatsoever. Because of all these eye-opening moments, I've realized that my whole perspective on listening comprehension was completely wrong. Because at the beginning of my Spanish learning journey, I really thought that I was going to increase my listening comprehension, basically like this kind of like curve here. So, you know, over time it would slowly increase until it plateaued, or I guess, I guess, yeah, plateaued <laughs> at 100%. And then I was always just gonna understand 100% of what a Spanish speaker is saying. And I was completely wrong. It definitely has not been, or I definitely have not been understanding 100% of anything of what my Spanish speaking friends have been telling me. So really it is an ongoing battle when it comes to trying to increase my listening comprehension skills because it's just a big roller coaster. Let me know in the comment section below, how do you increase your Spanish listening comprehension?